I think it's time this car gets a proper suspension. So, why does this car possibly need a new suspension? And furthermore, what do I mean by new suspension? For starters, this car is about 23 years old, meaning our suspension has seen better days. We're gonna make some upgrades. Today we're installing proper coilovers and adjustable control arms. They're gonna make the car handle a lot better. We'll lower it so it looks better, and we're gonna fix a lot of age-related issues. We've already done a bit of suspension work on this car. Recently did the front sway bar, as well as a long time ago in one of the early episodes, we upgraded the rear sway bar. Today we're gonna install some coilovers along with adjustable control arms, and we're just going to focus on the front of the car. The next episode, we'll go through every aspect of the rear suspension, then we'll talk adjustability and actually get the car set up. We'll do our very best to get this car handling as good as we possibly can. To start any of this though, we need to get the wheel off and see what we're working with. If you watched my suspension series on my Audi TT, you might look at this and be pretty confused. The one thing that is immediately gonna stick out to you is just how many control arms there are on this car. Here's the TT for reference. One thing to note is on this platform, these control arms are known for going out. I have receipts from when I bought the car showing that the lower control arms were replaced. The uppers, however, have seen better days. Thankfully, we were gonna replace these anyways. And that's where these come in. These are front and rear adjustable control arms for the B5. They're gonna give us the adjustability we need to achieve a proper alignment spec at the lower ride height. To lower the car though, we're gonna need coilovers. These are BC Racing BR style coilovers. They've got adjustable height and adjustable dampening. I've never personally tried BC Racing coilovers, so I'm excited to see what I actually think of them. I've heard nothing but good things about them. This kit is designed to replace the stock struts in the car. These'll let us adjust our ride height. A lower car has a lower center of gravity, and it usually looks a lot better too. It'll also fix our Jeep-style wheel gap. These also have adjustable dampening. The best way to describe dampening is with a situation. Whenever you hit a bump, the suspension springs are going to compress and decompress, absorbing that vibration. The shock's job is to reduce that feeling, reducing the impact and making it almost unnoticeable. These are adjustable so we can make the suspension harder or softer, and changing that plays a lot into grip, but we'll get into that in the suspension tuning episode. For me though, the main priority with all of this is a better handling car. It's naturally gonna look better lower, but performance is the goal here. And I know for a fact this car is not going to handle like the TT does, but I guarantee we can make it handle a lot better than it currently does. It's got loads of grip, but the suspension is old. The whole car rocks forward and backwards whenever you brake or accelerate, kind of like a boat. And the ride height is so high that it's not super confidence inspiring when you're turning. The sway bars help, but I think this is gonna make a huge difference. All the pieces also have matching colors. So when it's all said and done, I think it's gonna look really, really good. There's another big reason I'm splitting these episodes into front and rear, as opposed to breaking it up by control arms and coilovers like I did on the TT. On this car, the easiest way to remove the upper control arms is to take them out with the stock struts. So in the real world, you're doing this all at once anyways. It just made a lot of sense to show it like that. The first thing I removed was this pinch bolt right here. Fair warning, these can tend to get a bit stuck. Thankfully though, I didn't run into any seized bolts on this job, which really surprised me. At this point, the upper control arms are 
held into the spindle by compression, so you can use a mallet to push them out the top. A little bit of persuasion, if you will. <laughs> After that, I removed this bolt attaching to the lower control arm, and then we moved our way up top. The stock suspension mounts to a little metal upper piece, which then mounts to the top of the car up here with these three bolts you can see me removing. Once these are gone, it's ready to come out as one piece. Honestly, pretty simple to remove. It sometimes takes a bit of wiggling and moving it around to get it to actually come out, but once it does, you're good to go. Here's what it looks like outside the car, and you can see just how old and beat this is. Both of the joints on the upper control arms happen to be leaking. And overall, this is a huge piece when compared to the new coilovers we're throwing on. We aren't, however, done with it though. We need to reuse the metal piece that connects to the top of the car. And anytime you're taking something off the top of a spring, use spring compressors. This piece didn't end up being under tension, but you wouldn't really know that looking at it so it's always better to be safe than sorry. Plus, if your stock suspension had failed in a way that this was holding tension, you wouldn't know until you needed to. So my rule of thumb is to always take the 20 seconds to install the spring compressor. Better safe than sorry. You'll notice that the stock suspension had a little rubber bushing that needs to go on top of the coilovers. Once again, if you're reusing that, make sure to use spring compressors to get that off. That will be holding pressure. If you're doing this much work already, I suggest you just get new ones anyways though. That's what I did. Whenever you get coilovers, you're gonna wanna check the preload. Some come preloaded and some don't. The springs on coilovers are specifically rated for the weight of your vehicle, but they need a certain amount of tension provided by this little metal lower piece in order to actually support the weight of the vehicle like they're intended to. That amount of pressure is preload. On these, the way you set it is by tightening this upper collar until you can just barely move the spring around. Then you bring up the lower locking collar until it is snug. From here, it's as simple as tightening the upper without moving the lower until you can fit the spanner between the two. That's exactly four millimeters according to BC, and it's the amount of preload that these need. Once the spanner fits in there properly, you're good to move up the locking collar and tighten it down. Like I said earlier, we're not worried about ride height in this episode. So we're simply going to install these coilovers at their preload height. We're gonna make sure they're both equal, of course, but we're not gonna adjust it past that. I wanna get the full suspension on there properly and make sure all the bushings have time to settle into their natural state. Then we'll worry about dampening and height. If we did it any earlier, the car would just get lower as we drove it without us intending it to. I gave the other front coilover the same treatment so I didn't have to worry about it later. It's a lot easier to measure these when they're out of the car. With the coilovers preloaded and ready to go in, we can attach them to the stock upper. You'll also notice that a good amount of the hardware I'm using for this install is new. I ordered an install kit with my coilovers so that I got a bunch of new hardware to throw in. Some of it's single use, so I generally like to replace it. With that though, we're now able to move on to the control arms. Just like the stock control arms, these are different left and right. Since these are adjustable length, we need to decide how long we want them to be. A really good rule of thumb is to let an alignment shop deal with that. They're going to be able to check the specifics of your alignment and make sure that these are set exactly where they need to be. My general approach for these aftermarket arms is to always initially set them to the length of the OEM arm that you're trying to replace. A really good way to do that is to use the bolt that actually hold them in place to connect them together. Then you can accurately compare the length and make sure that you're gonna be just fine. On the S4, these uppers give us a lot of control over our camber. When we lower the car, that's naturally going to affect our camber. And depending on how low we go, we may not be able to achieve proper alignment specs without these. So they're going to be extremely useful down the line. These have a similar bushing up top, but down where it connects to the spindle, we have to build it a little bit more. They have a heim joint and a little metal piece with a spacer that goes into the bottom. You're then able to screw it in from the top so it stays in place. It's a very cool and satisfying design to assemble. 
Like I've always said, quality machine work is very satisfying. <laughs> the heim joints you can torque down now. The rubber bushings on the top, however, we're gonna torque down when the suspension is in the car at ride height, so I'm just getting them loosely in. Once this one was ready, I reinserted it into the upper and went ahead and did the same thing to the other side. Well, here's the final product for the passenger side. I think this looks so much better than what it did before. The matching colors were a great choice. It's honestly a really pretty piece, and it's gonna be a lot more functional than this OEM piece as well. With that, this piece is ready to go back in the car. Reinstallation is honestly a lot easier than getting the OEM piece out, which is nice because that wasn't that bad either. This piece is by nature smaller than the OEM suspension, so it is pretty easy to slide it into place. It doesn't get caught on stuff nearly as much as the OEM piece did. You can choose to reinstall the bolts in pretty much whatever order you'd like. Some orders are easier than others. On this side, I started with the bolt on the lower control arm and then moved on to the upper control arms, followed by the bolts that go in from the top of the engine Bay. For that part, you're going to want to use a jack to push it up into the right place. You're also going to reuse your friend the mallet to persuade these new control arms into their new home. After using a wire wheel to clean the inside of the spindle, these go in pretty easily. The final piece of the puzzle is to use a jack to jack the entire suspension assembly upwards. Then you can easily thread in the bolts from the top of the engine bay to keep the whole system in place. After that, you can jack the car up even further to mimic ride height in order to torque down those two upper control arm bushings. And that's really all she wrote for this. Suspension can be pretty daunting, but like anything with cars, if you take it one step at a time, you'll generally end up in a pretty good place. At this point, we were ready to put this side back on the ground. We've got new bushings and it's effectively set to the stock ride height, so it won't be much lower just yet. Don't worry, we'll change that in the future. With that, it was time to move on to the next side. This side is an exact mirror image of the first side, so it should, in theory, take quite a bit less time, especially since we've done it all before. I needed to get this done today to keep pace, so I went ahead and attempted this knowing that I was racing against the sun. These videos take a good amount of time to write, film, and produce, so pacing the jobs as I do them is actually pretty important. The install itself went totally fine, but I can't say the same about the working conditions. I spent so much time moving the cameras around that I ended up surrounded in darkness, with my film lights being the only way to keep the job going. But since this was the same job that we had just done, I was determined to finish it. there's something about being surrounded by nothing but your work that is weirdly peaceful. And I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this in some capacity. Focusing so hard on one specific thing that you kind of lose track of time entirely. Of course, you're in a rush to get things done. No distractions, nothing. In this case, it was pitch black outside. With the light illuminating solely what you're working on, it's hard to focus on anything else. I don't suggest you work in the dark for safety reasons, obviously, but I did want to bring it up 
because honestly, it's an interesting thing to think about. It's also bizarrely peaceful. You'd think it would feel identical to the first side, because it's the same job and we did it about an hour ago. But in a weird way, the setting completely changed. In the dark, listening to good music, with this as the only thing to both see and focus on, it's almost trance-like or dream-like. I don't really know how to describe it. Kind of an interesting observation though. The front suspension is on, and it looks fantastic. You can just tell this is gonna be a much more enjoyable setup than what was on there before. After a little bit of double checking on our work from yesterday, we switched our sights to the back of the car. It's a completely different setup than the front, and we've gotta use a completely different approach. That is a story for the next episode, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, want to see more, or just want to support me, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It's the best way you can help me and my content. I've got a lot more on the way for both cars, and I can't wait to bring you the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.